Today's follow along class will teach you everything you need to know in order to stand on one hand. Now I want to make sure that every single one of you guys can benefit fully from this class, which is why I've created the one arm handstand workout that does not involve any kind of balance whatsoever, allowing you to focus on the things that matter most, alignment and upper body pushing strength, even on a bad balance day. No matter your current level, this workout is right for you. If you're just getting started training headsets at the wall, this workout will give you basic handset strength and upside down awareness to make your next wall walk an absolute piece of cake. If you're ready to take your handset off the wall and you start to work on freestanding handstand, then the alignment tips here and the advanced handstand strength will give you the confidence to accelerate your journey towards the freestanding handstand indefinitely. Last but not least, if you're ready to start working towards your one-arm headset more seriously, then listen up. Because today's workout is a mix of theory and training. You see, simply doing the drills is not enough. You need to understand why you're doing the drills in order to be able to actually do them well. I've been coaching one-arm handstands successfully for enough years now to be able to tell you exactly what you have to improve in order to be able to stand on one hand. Look, when we're standing on two hands, the weight is in between our shoulders, allowing us to rely on our chest and anterior deltoid muscles mainly. Now, as soon as we transfer it towards one hand, the weight travels from the inside of the shoulder towards the outside of the shoulder, forcing us to use our posterior deltoids significantly more. We have to prepare them for that. Once we are out there, we have to side bend. And we have to side bend without any rotation. That's not easy. For most people, this is the first big limiting point. It's going to require specific mobility, specific coordination, and specific strength. Last but not least, we have to take the hand off the floor without lifting our shoulder away from the floor. The problem is that in order for our shoulder to lift away from the floor, our lat has to engage. The problem with the lat is that it doesn't just pull on the shoulder, it also pulls on the hips. It pulls the hips back to parallel, and on top of that, it's going to make you rotate and you simply fall out. If you want to get real serious with your handstand training and you want to get a free handstand routine customized towards your current handstand technique and strength level, taking things such as your shoulder mobility, hamstring mobility, and wrist mobility into account, then follow the link down below, work your way through the in-depth customization, and request your free workout right now into your inbox. All you're gonna need for today's workout is a medium strength elastic and a box. If you don't have a box, honestly, a stable table, a chair, or even a kitchen counter can do. Anything that you can use to elevate your legs will be perfect. First thing up for every single handsome workout you will ever do, shoulder warm-up and prehab work. Do it right away with me. You're gonna put your left leg out in front. You're gonna place the elastic underneath your left foot. Grab it tight in your left hand. You don't wanna have a slack at the beginning of this exercise. Now, square out your hips with your shoulders, engage your core to stabilize everything. Pull your elbow back to align it with your shoulders. We're gonna externally rotate on the axis of the shoulders. We're gonna go for eight reps. We're already at rep number three. Engage your core to stabilize your elbow. Five. Six. Seven. And one last one. Eight. Good, change sides. Other foot in front. Right hand grabs the elastic. Again, tighten everything up, nice and squared. Pull your elbow back so your elbow is in line with your shoulders. Externally rotate and we come back down one. Two. Tighten everything up, stabilize your elbow. Four, five, six, seven. Perfect, we're gonna come back to the first side one more time. We're gonna do it with a little extra, and we're just gonna do four reps. You're going to pull the elbow back like we used to. You're going to externally rotate the arm on the shoulder axis, and I want you to extend the arm up, keeping this pressure against the elastic, Bring the elbow back down and rotate down. That's one, one more time. Externally rotate, upper arm comes to the ear, bring the arm back down, internally rotate, halfway there. Externally rotate, fully lock the elbow on top, back down, rotate down three, one last one, external rotation, push the hand up, back down, change sides, good. Last set. Once again, square up, everything nice and tight. Pull the elbow back, externally rotate, upper arm to the ear, and we come back down, that's one. Externally rotate, 
arms to the ear, bring it back down in line, and relax, halfway there. Externally rotate on the axis, bring your biceps to your ear, elbow comes back down, hand down, and one last one, externally rotate, hand comes up, back down, bring your hand back down. Nice, good job. We are starting to warm up the shoulders. We're gonna do one more general injury prevention exercise before we're gonna get started with some hands-in specific warm-up exercises. Here's what I want you to do. We're gonna sit down. You're gonna put the elastic around your feet. I want you to grab the elastic, and this is quite important, and this is especially gonna be important for all the following exercises. I want you to grab the elastic with your full hand, four fingers on the elastic, like the elastic is an extension of your fingernails. Both hands like this. And we're going to simply do back flies. Shoulders are depressed, pulling the hands back, and we come back. One. We're going to do eight reps here as well. Three, and that's going to be it for the warm up. Four. Now, hands this is very upper body pushing focused. I always like to include as much pulling work as possible into my routine to stay nice and balanced. Seven, last rep, eight. Relax, good. Coming to the more heads specific work. Watch me first and then we're gonna do it all together. You're gonna to set yourself up on your knees. You're gonna place the elastic underneath your knees. Now, I want you to take the elastic exactly in the way that I had just described it to you. Like this. The elastic should come out of the palm of your hands, like they're the extension of your fingernails. Now what you're gonna do here is you're going to put your hands overhead and we're going to do a wrist curl and a shoulder shrug. A wrist curl and a shoulder shrug. Easy like that. Eight reps of both, it's gonna help us warm up our wrists, it's gonna prepare the shoulders for the scapular elevation, that's so very important for all of your handstands. Really, it's just gonna get us ready. So, on the knees, elastic underneath the knees. Grab the elastic as you should. If you grab it differently, it's not gonna help you. Hands come around the back, overhead. One wrist curl, one shoulder shrug. One wrist curl, one shoulder shrug. And three. And four, don't arch your back. And five, look at your hands. And six, and seven, and eight. Good, relax. We're gonna do a second set of this in a second. I just wanna to explain to you why I love this wrist extension exercise so much. Look, when you're standing in a handstand, Every time you fall over towards the back, you have to push your hands into the floor exactly in the way that we're practicing right now to push yourself back up into the regular handstand to stop yourself from falling, making this such a very important wrist preparation exercise. Ready? You had enough rest? Let's get it. Hands overhead, wrist curl, and shoulder shrug. Wrist curl, shoulder shrug. Wrist curl, three, and four, and five, and six. We got two more, seven, last one, eight. Good, relax. We're gonna stick to these kind of exercises. The next one is very one-arm handstand specific. Remember what I said earlier, it's difficult to take the hand off in the one-arm handstand without raising the shoulder up. We're gonna practice exactly this now. In a second, first I'll show you how it works. You're going to put your hands overhead, like we just practiced. You're going to elevate your scapula. And now I want you to look at your right hand, because that's the one you're standing on, and I want you to bring that left hand out towards the side. You bring it back. Then you look towards the left hand, you bring the right hand out towards the side, and you bring it back. Pretty self-explanatory. Here's what's important. Your anterior deltoids should be touching your chin, and as you bring the hand out, they should continue to touch your chin. Imagine you're touching the ceiling and you're drawing a straight line on the ceiling of your hand. Of course, that's impossible. Your shoulder's like the center of a clock. Your hand wants to draw a quad, but we try to draw a straight line. It's gonna help you really push your shoulder up and work on this elevation, coordination, and strength for the one-arm handstand. Let's get at it. Hands overhead, look at your hands, look at the ceiling between your hands, elevate your scapula. First, we're gonna look at the right hand, now, fully staying elevated, you bring your left hand out towards the side. Draw a straight line on the ceiling. Bring the hand back. Look in the middle. Look at the left hand. Transfer weight. We're standing on the left hand. Right hand draws a straight line out towards the side. 
And we bring it back, come on, push up, push up. Come on, both anterior deltoids, touch your chin. Look at the right hand, draw your left hand out towards the side. Keep pushing tall, keep pushing tall. Bring your left hand back, look in the middle, look at the left hand, stand on the left hand, draw the right hand out towards the side. Bring the hand back, look at the middle one more time and relax. Woo. And I promise you, one arm handstands are honestly almost easier than this. We're gonna do one more set of this with a little twist to it. Look, when you're taking your hand off for the one arm handstand, especially if you're doing a one arm handstand on the floor, the problem is that you can't take your hand off with a straight arm because, well, the floor is in the way, you're gonna get stuck. This means you have to take your arm off with a bent elbow and the elbow has to guide the movement. Imagine you have like a little string attached to your elbow and it's pulling your elbow out towards the side. Okay, so in a second, I'll show you again first. We're gonna be up here, we're gonna look at the left hand and now this right hand is gonna come out towards the side and it's gonna come back, both times bending the elbow. Now this might look funny to anybody else in the room. To you doing it, you know this ain't funny because it is difficult, it is hard. It's very difficult to fully elevate the scapula and at the same time to bend the elbow. Let's try it. Hands overhead, we're gonna do two on each side again. Elevate your scapula. This time we're gonna start by looking at the left hand, bend your right elbow, right hand comes out towards the side, fully elevate that scapula, bend the right elbow again, put that hand back. Look at the right hand. Bend your left elbow, bring the left hand out towards the side, keep both shoulders fully elevated. Bend the left elbow, put the left hand back. Look at the middle, look at the left hand. Right elbow is bent, right hand comes out towards the side. Both scapula elevated, both anterior deltoids touching the chin. Bend the right elbow, put the right hand back. Look at the right hand. Bend the left elbow, bring the left hand out. Fully elevate your scapula, push as tall as you can. Engage your core, everything is tight. Left elbow bent, put your left hand back. Look in the middle one more time, push out as tall as you can. Push your anterior deltoids all the way up to your nose and relax. Woo. Hey, good job. I got good news. It is time to finally get upside down. This first concept that I want to introduce today is the narrow handstand. Very difficult, very important. Now, to start slowly, we're going to do two sets of L handstand variations with the feet on the box. We're not going to put them against the wall as I want to keep pressure vertical and not horizontal making it a little bit easier. Remember, we don't usually use our posterior deltoids when training handstands, so it's important that we start slowly and we build volume and pressure slowly over time. Progressive overload, you know what it means. Guys, it's time, let's grab our boxes. If you need a second to prepare your box, now is a good moment to pause the video. For everyone else, let's chat rules of narrow handstands. Narrow handstand basically means that from your regular handstand position, you want to bring your hands closer towards each other. All traditional handstand rules still apply. Your hands are still parallel to each other. Your elbows are still locked. Your scapula is still fully elevated and you're still looking at your hands. One thing I want you to keep in mind, depending on how massive your shoulders are, narrow handstand might mean this. If you're used to standing really, really wide, shoulder width means narrow for you. Now, of course, the goal is eventually for the thumbs to touch or possibly even cross each other. But like I said, we have to take it slow. I'm gonna show you the exercise that we're gonna do and then we're gonna do it all together. The idea is that with our hands narrow on the floor, we wanna put our feet on the box. We're gonna end up approximately in an L. It doesn't have to be perfect, your legs don't have to be perfectly parallel to the floor. But we wanna have our elbows locked and the scapula elevated with a slight anterior pelvic tilt to get the weight into the fingertips. Now from here, you're gonna bring one leg up, align it on top of your hands, shoulders and hips, and we bring it back down. We're gonna do a total of four reps. Left, right, left, right, alternating sides, two on each side, and that's it. You ready? Remember, I wanna see your hands narrow. Not shoulder width, but narrow. If you wanna make me proud, thumbs touch. Let's get at it. Place your hands on the floor. Thumbs touching each other, or at least almost touching each other. Place your hands close enough so you don't have to walk them. Right foot on the box, left foot on the box. Elbows locked, scapula elevated, slight anterior pelvic tilt. Right leg comes up. Slowly, stop the leg right on top. Push out nice and tall. Bring the leg back. Hold the anterior power tilt. Left leg comes up. Push out nice and tall, stay here for a moment. Leg comes back down. Halfway there, right leg comes up. Push out nice and tall. Slowly bring the leg back, stabilize the hips and shoulders. Do not allow your shoulders to collapse now. Left leg comes back, last rep, push tall. Do not collapse as you bring your leg back. Hold the L for a moment and we come down. Nice, huh? not so bad for the first narrow handstand. Now while you rest, I'm gonna show you the next variation. Set number two is gonna be just slightly different. 
We're gonna get started exactly with the same way. You're gonna put one leg up, but now instead of just holding the leg up here, I want you to come down to a tuck, put the leg back up, and we're gonna put it back on the box. Now what's important here for me is that as you bring this leg down, your shoulders should not collapse. Make sure you keep them nice and stable, nice and strong. Keep pushing them not towards the box, but tall. As you bring the leg up, bring it right on top, not towards the back, up here, and we bring it back down. Enough rest, let's get at it. Hands on the floor, keep them narrow. Thumbs should almost touch each other. One leg on the box, second leg on the box. Bring one leg up, push out nice and tall, everything's engaged. Slowly pull the knee down to the tuck. Bring the leg back up, into the straight line, back onto the box. Left leg comes up. Stop it right on top, push up nice and tall. Pull the knee down towards the chest, keeping the back engaged, keeping the shoulders open. Bring the leg back up. And we bring it back on the box, halfway there. Right leg comes up, push up nice and tall. Pull the knee down. Push the knee back up. Nice and tall, stay strong in the shoulders now. Last rep, best rep. Left leg up, push up nice and tall, elbows are still locked. Look at your hands. Pull the knee down towards the chest. Push your leg back up, stay tall, stay tall, stay tall. Bring the leg back down, relax. Boom, how is that for first day narrow handstand training? Not bad, eh? Now, let me tell you, the hard thing about the narrow handstand really is getting up into the handstand. As soon as you change your handstand position, you do something more awkward with the hands, it gets difficult. So we're gonna invest two sets into practicing exactly that. I'll show you first once again, and then we're gonna do it together. We're gonna do an exercise called the partial tuck jump, but with narrow hands. Basically, we want to place our shoulders on top of the hands, and they never move from here. They're gonna stay here for the entire exercise. First, we're gonna drop the feet to the box, and then we're gonna drop the feet off the box into the tuck, and we come back down. Now, if this is your first time doing tuck jumps or doing narrow tuck jumps, they can be cute little jumps. If you're more comfortable with it, instead of doing four reps, you're just gonna do the first and the third rep, but you're gonna hold your handstand for those reps in between, okay? Two times four with a little break in between. Let's get at it. Place your hands, remember the narrow, thumbs should be touching each other. Lock your elbows, shoulders on top of the center of the hands, and they stay there. Elevate your knees. You're ready, jump to the box, jump to the tuck. That's one. Jump to the box, jump to the tuck. Look at your hands, don't look at the box. The box is not going anywhere. Jump to the box, jump to the tuck, and we do one last one, last one. Jump to the tuck, and we come back down. Nice. Now, the thing is, when you're jumping into a regular handstand, any kind of regular handstand mount, you can bend your elbows, you can fight for it, you can kind of catch it. This is not gonna work with the narrow handstand. The narrow handstand, you have to make it up to 85 or 90 percent then you might be able to fight a little bit but if you don't commit to it because well you're scared and i would understand it it's not going to work for us second set you ready let's get it make your thumbs touch each other shoulder on top of the hands knees come off the floor let's go jump to the box jump to the tuck nice make sure your knees stay low jump to the box knees to the chest to the tuck two jump to the box Tuck, and one last one, the best one. I will stay locked. Try to hold your tuck if you can. Good, and we come down. Lovely. This is gonna be it for the narrow hand sense, and for now, this is all we're gonna need the box for. From here, we're gonna move into side bends. Like I said, it's really important that you're building your narrow handstand practice and volume slowly over time to not overload your shoulders and potentially injure them. For the side bends, it's the same. We need to start slowly. While we start slowly, we wanna make sure that we pay special attention on form. Now get rid of your box and meet me back here in a minute. Now the nice thing about this side bend warm up is that it's gonna give our wrists and shoulders a little break before we later circle back around to do our one arm handstand conditioning. For the side bends, the first exercise is gonna be on the knees. We're gonna put one leg out towards the side. Now look, foot, knee, hip, hip, knee, shoulder, shoulder, everything in one line. Push your opposite hip towards the front, knee towards the back, foot is externally rotated. Hands overhead. Now I want you to take that hip and push it down towards that heel whilst leaning out towards the side. And we come back. Keep your shoulders low. Don't elevate your scapula here. Push down, 
and we come back. Imagine you're in a toaster and you don't want to burn. Three, every time you come down, that bottom armpit needs to push towards the front to make sure you don't rotate. Four, two more, push your hips down whilst you also bend towards the side. Five, one last one. Six, change sides. Same thing here. Knee, foot, knee, hip, hip, shoulders, shoulders. Everything is in line. Keep them squared. Foot externally rotated. Hands overhead, push your hips down, lean out towards the side. One. Two. With every side bend, we come a little bit deeper. Three. Four. Five, and one last one, the best one. Six. Good, stand up. Now this next one is going to be a deep side bend in a deep plie. The thing with side bends is that besides just having to side bend whilst being upside down on your hands and not rotating, you also have to push your legs open so they stay in that deeper straddle. As soon as your legs move out of the straddle, you're going to struggle. Here's what we're going to do. Wide stance, legs externally rotated. You can do it right away with me. Hands behind the head, core's engaged, stand up tall. Bend your knees under your hips and knees on one line. Push your knees towards the back, hips towards the front. Bend towards the right side. Come back up towards the left. Keep pushing your knees open. That's one. Stabilize. Two, hips stay low. You got this. Three, and we do one last one. Back to the middle, last one on the left. And when you come back now, I want you to stay low for five, four, push your knees back, three, two, one, and you come up, nice. All right, side bends are warm, hips are warm, everything is warm. From here, it's time to get serious. It's time to get upside down and bend towards the side. But we're not gonna do this here in the open space, no. We're gonna head over to the wall. We're gonna use our best friend. I'll see you there. All right. Here at the wall, I want to keep it short and juicy. Look, the main issue of side bends really lays in the shoulders because the shoulders are weak and they give way. I'm going to show you the exercise. We're going to do a total of two sets. Once I've shown it to you, we're going to do it together, okay? The idea is that we're going to do the side bends on the wall, but on our forearms to cut out the shoulders. This means we're going to have to wiggle our way towards the wall. The head is not touching the floor. You're going to open your legs into full straddle, and here we're going to side bend. Both feet staying on the wall the entire time, and you try to come as low as possible without leaning towards that foot. We stay right in the middle the entire time. Now, when I'm telling you it's not easy, I mean that it's not easy, but it shouldn't be easy. This is one-arm handstand training. It's gotta be challenging. In your forearm stand, elevate your scapula. Your face, your head should not be on the floor. Engage your core, push your legs open into your full straddle. Don't allow your legs to close while you do this. You ready? Let's get at it. Trust me, you might think the way up is the hardest part, but really, it's only gonna get harder once you're up. Let's get to work. Come up, wiggle your way towards the wall, push out nice and tall. Step one, open your legs into full straddle. Keeping the shoulders elevated, let's pull the right foot down towards the floor, and we come back. Repeat the same thing on the left side. And we come back. Stay tight, come on, stay up. One more round. Right foot comes down, back up. Left foot comes down, back up, and you rest. Well done. Take a minute to recover. You're gonna be training this now for the next couple weeks. I encourage you to come back and take this class over and over again as you're gonna get better. Once you do get better here, you can move a tiny little bit away from the wall and do these just off the wall without your feet touching the wall. This will allow you to feel as soon as you rotate, as soon as you make a mistake, your feet touch the wall and you know you messed up. You can readjust. Once you get comfortable on your forearms, you can of course also come up onto your hands and do it in a proper handstand, the way that we're gonna need it for the one-arm handstand. But for now, let's do our second set right here, right now on our forearms. Let's get to work. Forearms on the floor, feet against the wall. Wiggle your way towards the wall. Push out nice and tall, come as close as you can. Elevate your scapula, 
full straddle. Engage your legs, externally rotate them. Fully lock your knees, pull your right foot down towards the floor. And you come back up. Left foot down towards the floor. And we come back up. One more round. Right foot goes down. Back up. Stay tight. Don't arch your back. Left comes down. Keep your legs in the fullest straddle. Wiggle away. Come down. Boom. Well done. That's already it for the side bends for today. Like I said, start with less volume and over time slowly build up your volume. If not, pressure on your back is just going to get way too big, way too fast. You're going to regret it as you're going to be too sore. We're done here. I'm going to meet you back at your box for our finishing drills. Let's get it. Now for this final portion of today's workout, I want to combine all the things that we've learned earlier. We're going to do this exercise in three steps. Step number one is going to be in a pike stand. First, let me show you what a pike stand is so we can get on the same page. Start basically in a downward dog kind of stretch. Raise up on your tippy toes, bring your shoulders towards the front until your shoulders are on top of the center of your hands. Elevate your scapula, push your fingertips into the floor. That's a good starting position. Now from this starting position, I want you to look at the hand we're going to stand on, walk your feet over, side bend a little bit so the weight really comes into this hand. We put the hand out towards the side, far away, not somewhere here, not somewhere here, far away. Both shoulders are elevated. Put the hand back, walk back to the middle, look on the other side, we're gonna do the other side. As always, right, left, right, left, four in total, alternating sides. Look at your hand, elevate your scapula, lock your elbow, walk your feet over, side bend slightly. It's a lot to think about, but we need to go through all of these steps and we need to do it a lot. So it becomes completely natural to you. So when you do it later, in a handset, upside down, possibly even without the wall, you don't have to think anymore. It's gotta be complete autopilot. You ready? Let's do it. Hands shoulder width apart. Raise up onto your tippy toes. Shoulders on top of the hands. Load your fingertips. Look at the right hand. Walk your feet over towards the right. Side bend slightly. Left hand out towards the side. Fingertip hold. Place your hand back. Walk to the middle. Look at the left hand. Walk over to the left side. Side bend slightly. Right hand out towards the side. Hold it. Put your hand back. Look in the middle. Walk back. One more time. Look at the right hand. Walk your feet over. Lock your elbow, elevate your scapula, left hand out towards the side, fingertip hold, both shoulders fully elevated. Put your hand back, look to the middle, walk to the middle. Look to the left, walk to the left, side bend slightly, weight is in the fingertips. Elevate your scapula, right hand out towards the side. Hold it, hold it, put the hand back, walk back to the middle, relax. Nice, well done. While you rest, I'll show you on the box. Exactly the same thing. We're gonna be in and out, you're going to look at the hand you'll stand on, walk your feet over, side bend slightly, put your hand out towards the side. Now here really becomes important that we don't do this because our hips are just gonna fall back to the middle. You really have to, guided by the elbow, draw this hand out towards the side. All right, I know you're eager and we're about to get started. Now, if this looks intimidating, if this makes you nervous, that's cool. You're just gonna do it one more time in the pike stand. This pike stand is already really good training for you. You're gonna develop shoulder strength, coordination, and everything that you need. That just in a few workouts, you're gonna be ready to push your feet up here. No matter which progression you choose, let's get to work. Hands on the floor, elevate your feet. Hands shoulder width apart, elevate your scapula, elbows locked. Look at your right hand, walk your feet towards the right, side bend slightly, draw your left hand out towards the side. Left fingertips are on the floor. Replace your left hand, look in the middle, Come back to the middle. Look at the left hand, walk your feet over towards the left, side bend slightly. Put your right hand out towards the side, fingertips stay on the floor. Scapula is fully elevated, replace your right hand, come back to the middle. One more time, look at the right hand, side bend slightly, left hand comes out towards the side, fingertips. Nice and tall. Replace the left hand, look in the middle, come back to the middle. Look at the left hand, walk your feet towards the left, side bend slightly, weight is in the fingertips, right hand out towards the side, hold it. Scapula is fully elevated, replace your hand, come back to the middle, look in the middle, come down. Nice. We have one more variation left of this. First, I want to explain to you a really common mistake that happens here. Remember in the very beginning, I was saying we need to have a very slight anterior pelvic tilt in all of the L handstands? Now here, this is even more important. Look what happens. If I'm going to have a slight anterior pelvic tilt, I can come here and my weight stays in top of the fingertips, exactly where it needs to be. If my back rounds and I'm basically here, my weight's always gonna drop back here. It's important that you commit to this anterior pelvic tilt to get your weight into the fingertips where you can do a one-arm handstand. The last progression that I wanna do here today, it's gonna to be the same thing. We're gonna come out here, 
but instead of just holding it, I want you to really carefully sink into your shoulder, tiny little bit, and you push out. But what's important is that this push out happens from your supporting arm and not from the free arm, right? We're training the shoulder that we're standing on, not the fingers of the other hand. That'd be weird, wouldn't it? This is gonna be the last exercise of today, so that's pretty exciting. But this also means that we have to give it everything that we've got left. We're gonna come on the first side, we're gonna do four. Second side, four reps. Then three, three, two, two, five seconds hold, five seconds hold, we come down, we're done. If you're not ready for this, do it in the pike stand, that's cool. If halfway through you realize, damn, I'm done for today, you come down, but you don't stop. You come down and you do it in the pike stand. And if even the pike stand then, you run out of juice, you run out of power, that's good. We're trying to get there, we're trying to make us tired, we're trying to fatigue, to build muscle. If everything's lost, you just stay in your pike stand, you commit to it, put your shoulders in front and just hold it on two hands until we're done. Ready? Let's get it. Hands on the floor, feet on the box. Look at your right hand. Walk your feet over, side bend slightly, left hand out towards the side. Sink in, push out one. Sink in, push out two, three, four. Replace the left hand. Look towards the left hand, walk your feet over towards the left, side bend slightly. Right hand out towards the side. Sink in, push out one. Sink in, push out two, and three, and four. Good, first round is done. Right hand on the floor, walk your hand over towards the right. Left hand out towards the side, we do three shrugs. One, two, three. Replace the left hand, walk your hands over towards the left, right hand out towards the side. One shrug, two shrugs, three shrugs. Replace the hand, walk your feet over, look at the right side, two shrugs. One, two, nice. Look, it's a piece of cake, you're almost done. Walk over towards the left, right hand comes out towards the side, sink in, push out, sink in, push out, right hand down, walk your feet over, left hand out towards the side for five, four, three, elevate your scapula, one, change sides, last side, best side, come on, you got this, do it for yourself, five, four, three, two, one, boom. You're well done, that's it for today. You can be proud of yourself. You didn't just break a sweat and work on your upper body pushing strength, no. You also work towards increasing your understanding of the one-arm handstand. Well done. Start training handstands three times per week. Eventually, as you get used to the pressure and your body gets better recovering from handstands, you can add an additional session or even train five times per week. Handstands are very technical and frequency and volume at the end of the day are key. It's really about spending quality time upside down for your body to accept that being upside down, being on your hands, is the new normal. But no, doing handstands every 30 minutes, a little bit throughout the day is not a good approach. If you wanna get a free customized handstand routine into your inbox, then follow the link down below, answer the detailed questions and request your free workout. Until then, thank you so much for training and I'm gonna see you next time. Keep working hard.